he is putting his people above somebody that he loves very, very dearly. The reason why he is worshipped today is, the man never became resentful, never became hateful, never became angry. He did not become a recluse either. He went about fulfilling every duty that he has to do. This is nation's history. Literature is different, history is different. I don't see anybody taking Ramayana and Mahabharata as a gospel because there are all kinds of people in Mahabharata, the best sort of man, the worst sort of man, in between every kind of man and woman, is there over hundred thousand characters, how can you make a gospel out of it? <laughs> now, uh, see, if you come further south, people are questioning whether Rama existed or not. This is a, just a question of uh, poor memory. When the entire nation has been talking about it for thousands of years, now the problem is your trust in printed word is more than the spoken word, that is the whole problem. But you must understand this is a oral culture. We always transmitted most significant things orally. You may, you may think it's insignificant because it's not written, but anybody can write it down. People have written it down now, now it's a printed word. But now somebody questions, did Rama exist or not? Not in one place, in entire culture, when everybody is talking about the same story with minor variations here and there, it could not have been just made up by all the people. Here after all, Indians, we… Uh, we invented zero. We have certain freedom in using number of zeros. We are taking liberty with that. Don't… Uh, see. See, whether… whether six, seven thousand years ago, whether hundred thousand men fought or uh, ten thousand men fought, doesn't make a difference. The way the story is said in this country is not for its facts, but for its truth. You're trying to bring out a certain truth. The fact of it, whether hundred thousand men fought, ten thousand men fought, what does it matter? You don't have to manage that war today, it's over. So the important thing is, what is there for me to learn from that, all right? If… Uh, if that's a question mark, we can go ahead with that. Don't call them religious texts, this is nation's history. Literature is different, history is different. <laughs> literature… literature can be fiction. History is written in a dialectical way, so that it's always relevant for you. I'm saying six thousand years ago, whether a man existed or not, what's my problem? Unless he has something to contribute to my life today, isn't it? The fact is like this. Suppose six thousand years ago, Rama had a wife whose name was not Sita. What's my problem? A six thousand year old drama, if it got a little mixed up, it is not your problem, the problem is just this, is there something for us to get from that? Sure. That's all the thing is. Now, why we are worshipping Rama in this country is, he's not a super success. He's a serial disaster, if you look at it. Yes, even today is having real estate issues, that's why you brought this up <laughs> But uh, it is not today alone. Uh, it's not today alone, right from the beginning of his life, he is in trouble and trouble and trouble and trouble. See, he is a rightfully a king. He is coronated at the age of seventeen or eighteen. He mar marries a, a princess and within a one or two years, he is sent to the forest. They didn't go to the jungle for picnic. As uh, some of the television serials are showing Rama Sita doing all that, no, it is a… it is a like, you know, throwing him out of the kingdom from his power and everything. That itself would have shattered a man, but he settled down there. Now uh, the Sri Lankan people come and kidnap his wife and go away. After all, after all he is a king. If uh, somebody steals his wife and takes her away some three thousand kilometers down south, there's no GPS to even find out where is Sri Lanka, <laughs> all right? At a time like that, being a king, he could have found a local solution. There would be any number of women to marry the man, he's a king. But he goes in search of her, not with a big army, just him and his brother, like ordinary people. 
If a man has to walk three thousand kilometers down south, not knowing where she is, whether she is alive or dead or what's happened, then she must mean so much to him, yes or no? Otherwise, why would a man walk so that distance? Now, he goes there, he forms a Tamil army, don't forget this <laughs> and then uh, there is a fight, kills hundreds of people, burns down a beautiful city, gets back his wife, comes and settles down. Before this I will tell you, he goes for a year of penance in Himalayas. His brother asks, are you crazy? This man stole your wife and now you're doing penance for his death. He said he had ten basic qualities, Ravana. Killing those nine, which were horrendous qualities, I… no penance for me, no repentance for that. But he was also a great devotee and I killed that also. So one year of penance the man goes for. This is not a <laughs> And then he settles down and his wife is pregnant. You must understand for a king, his wife is pregnant means it's not just about a child, it's a progeny for his empire and there are many things involved. No sonogram, so he doesn't know whether it's a girl or a boy or boys or girls or anything. But once again a political situation evolves where he has to send his wife to the forest which you are saying is insecurity. Today in our country there are many kinds of things. I'm asking you, do you want a leader for this nation who puts the people of this nation above his own family and his personal love? I'm asking you. Yes. Or do you want a Dhritarashtra, at any cost my son? You want a man who puts the citizens of this uh, country above his family. This is not a, just another woman for him. He went and fought a battle for her, walked three thousand kilometers. This is not just another woman. He is living for her, but still he sends her back to the jungle when she is pregnant, knowing fully well that it could be his future for this kingdom. And he is putting… see, it is not just about a dobi, this is what your mistake… you are taking these things literally. When a dobi said, what it is being said is ordinary people are talking like this. Ordinary people have no trust in the king, that he is… she… he is just brought some woman from somewhere and she has made her our queen. Because queen is seen as a mother to the nation. We don't want such a woman as our mother, that's what they are saying. She went and lived with some man somewhere. This is what the people of those times are saying. So if the king says, I don't care what you think, I love my wife and keep her, that would be not a good king, not a good administrator. So he is putting his people above somebody that he loves very, very dearly and she's pregnant. It's not a small thing for him, it means a world, but still he sends her to the jungle. This should be bowed down to, this is why we bow down to the man. But you need to understand this in the right context, that is, if this woman didn't mean anything to her, he wouldn't have traveled down to Sri Lanka, fought a battle and brought her back, isn't it? No, no, you must see the words that he's uttered. <laughs> you must see the words he uttered about Sita, what she means to him, how he cried to Lakshmana and what he said. His actions are way more important. Why are you reading all these evil intentions in his mind <laughs> that he did not express anywhere? He did not express… With our words, we can say anything. See, as far as you are concerned, you know only what you read. You don't know anything else about his life, neither me nor you, all right? <laughs> so, from what you read, nowhere does it say that he was insecure. Nowhere does it say he went for his pride. Nowhere does it say that… No, no, everywhere it says very clearly. Let me tell you, the reason why he is worshipped today is, though life through disasters after disasters at him, the man never became resentful, never became hateful, never became angry. He did not become a recluse either. He went about fulfilling every duty that he has to do. With a personal pain and grief that he is carrying all his life, the man went about doing the best he can do for his praja of the day. If this is being accused of being as pride and this… Namaskaram everyone. So as you know that Ram Nomi is approaching to us, we have started our series of Rama trying to cover every perspective of Rama. So let's move ahead and stay connected to the series. Now, it is very easy and possible to critic Rama today by adopting the modern gaze. That is, we can dismiss Rama's treatment of Sita as unfair to women 
or see the depiction of vanaras as demeaning and ethnocentric indeed it is very easy to pick up from the figure from our past and dissect them whether it is krishna jesus or buddha it is very easy to scrutinize them through a contemporary lens and find the imperfect and flawed in some way but before we dismiss these figures with simple judgments let us not forget that humanity needs its icon these figures have for all their seeming imperfections served that vital functions for centuries whatever is our personal persuasions let us not forget that the ramayana has been one of the foundational narratives of the civilization rama has been the fulcrum of the lives of millions for over 7000 years it is important to see that he is not a religious figure he cannot be claimed exclusively by any faith nor there is any point in the story to say that rama proclaims himself as a hindu that he is not a religious figure he cannot be claimed exclusively by any faith if rama is cultural and spiritual icon for this country it is because he is the embodiment of stability balance peace truth compassion and justice we revere him because he embodies the qualities necessary to build a great civilization rama is so exceptional due to several reasons several thousand years ago when the rulers in most part of the world were mere conquerors often nothing short of barbarians rama showed an exemplary sense of humility of humanity sacrifice and justice he is not venerated because he is a conqueror of the outer world but he is a victor of the inner life because he is unshaken by adversity even after he kills ravan he does not gloat he comes to the body of the fallen hero and repents for a deed he had to commit through all the challenges in life he never lost his equilibrium never turns bitter or vengeful he stirs largely clear of guile and real politic and is vigilant about not misusing the power a man of equanimity he leads by example living a life of integrity and self sacrifice willing to renounce his own happiness for the sake of his subjects above all in a culture that values mukti of freedom he represents freedom from negativity from self interest and mean spiritedness he refuses to allow his interiority to be hijacked by a life of karmic turbulence in short rama is a hero not because he leads the perfect life but because he leads a remarkable one that is why he is considered as maryada purush and if ram raj represents an ideal it is because it is an emblem of just and fair state not of a tyrannical and authoritarian one this is what we want to make of india today and this is why this epic continues to be an enduring relevance so this is the time for every community to reach out as switch those in pain remembering that the man whose legacy they seek to protect was the kind who bore no ill will or resentment towards anyone this is the time to bow down in grace and gratitude remembering the humility that rama embodied jai shri ram and also at last i would like to thank you for all your contributions that you have made for my family member who has undergone brain surgery thanks a lot and also i would like to request to all to spread this information so that we can collect more funds as we are finding it difficult to pay the hospital charges so please spread this to your friends and families too and if they wish please contribute as per your convenience and at last stay safe healthy happy and namaskaram and also jai shri ram